If you're looking for an entry-level DSLR, the Canon T6i might be the right camera for you. Since I released the Nikon D3400, I received a handful of questions about other cameras, with one of them being the Canon T6i. Now, I've used this camera in the past, but I feel like today would be a good time for me to put it through a more formalized test. Now, with all that said, I want to start off by level setting. I'm outside, it's cold, it's gloomy, and in this part of the country, which I'm in the Midwest, it's to be expected. I'm also fighting a cold, so I apologize in advance if I'm coughing and hacking and sneezing, but I'm bundled up for the elements and I'm going to do my best to get through it because I think it's a worthwhile review. Now, here's the game plan. I'm going to start off by going over some of the key features, these features that I feel are important to this camera. When I'm done with that, we're going to do a field test. I'm going to shoot a bunch of photos with this camera and really put it through the paces. After that, I'm going to give you my list of pros and cons, and then I'm going to give you a summary and my overall thoughts on this camera. Now, I also want to level set by saying that my assumption here is that you're looking for your first DSLR, or maybe you have another entry-level DSLR and you're just looking to change or to upgrade. So with that said, I'm going to try to keep this relatively high level, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them below, and I'll do my best to help you out. So let's go ahead and jump right in with the features. This camera was released in April of 2015, and as of this recording, it is December 2016. That means this camera's been around for a little while, but for good reason. Canon continues to sell, support, and maintain this camera, and that's a good thing. This camera is a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, and that means you're going to get a higher resolution, which is good for an entry-level camera. It also contains 19 autofocus points, of which all of them are cross-type. What does the cross-type mean? Well, it means that this camera is going to offer a good means to track subjects coming in and out of the frame. The ISO on this camera ranges from 100 up to 12,800, and it will expand up to 25,600. If you're wondering what the higher ISO is all about, it means that if you're in a really low-lit situation, you can still capture that image. Just keep in mind, the higher the ISO, the more noise that's introduced to that image. The shutter speed on this camera goes up to 1 4,000th of a second, which is going to be fast enough to cover probably 99.9% .9 of your needs. This has a fully articulating touchscreen to it, and in continuous burst mode, this will shoot at 5 frames a second, which is fast enough to catch your kids in the backyard and some subtle activities. It's not the fastest on the market, but it's not the slowest. So at 5 frames a second, I think that's pretty decent. This camera also offers near-field communication, which is known as NFC. Now, it's built into this camera, and it allows you to leverage the Canon Connect app. That application will provide some remote functions on this camera, and that's something you can look into, and we can do a deeper dive later if you like. This camera is also known as the EOS 750D if you're outside of the U.S. Now, I think it's kind of funny because I saw this camera referenced as that, and I was wondering why. In the U.S., it's called the T6i. Those two names are not even close, but I wanted to connect the dots for you in case you're outside the U.S. and you're watching this review. Now, this camera does have a mic input, but it does not have a headphone jack to it. The other thing is that this camera will shoot 1080p, but it'll only do so at 30 frames a second. It'll do it at 25 and 24 as well, but if you want to shoot at 60 frames a second, you're going to have to drop down to 720p. Now, one other notable here is that this camera offers a function called High ISO Speed Noise Reduction System. Now that's a mouthful, but what that should do is when you're shooting at high ISOs, the camera should employ some features and functions that should help to reduce the noise of the image that's captured. We'll put that to the test later and see just how well it works. Now with all that said, what I'd like to do is jump into the field test. I'm going to start off by giving you just a quick demo of how you can vlog with this camera. As you start to record video or if you want to vlog, You'll notice here on the top, there's an icon that looks like a little camera, a little motion camera right here on the far side. And that's what you're going to want to go to. You'll want to go all the way to the top right here. And you're also going to want to take a look at your video quality. Now, you'll notice here on the back of the camera, we'll see if we can get this into focus here. I'm going to hit the AV button. And you'll notice right here at the bottom, it'll talk about your... Uh, 
your video quality. Now, I'm shooting this video review at 24 frames a second. Some will shoot at 30, some will shoot at 60, and they'll go standard, they'll go high def. Um, but I'm going to match my same frame rate that I'm shooting this video review at. So in this case, I'm going to shoot at 24 frames a second standard. So I select this right here. And you can see the tracking mechanism is set up right here. This is how I can move around and it helps to track the subject. Now in front of me is a river and I'm going to jump in front of the camera and I'm going to show you how we can self-compose. So I've grabbed my gorilla pod right here and I've got my camera. I'm going to slip right onto it. And at this point, what's nice with this when you're holding it, uh, I can pull the screen out like this right here and I can turn this around. This is vlogging with the Canon T6i. Now, is this heavy in my hand? It's not that bad. If you had to hold it all day, yeah, it might get a little weighty. But one thing to consider with this camera is that it does have the APS-C sensor, so your video quality is going to be pretty good. And if you hook an external microphone to it, the audio is going to be just as good as well. Now, as we get underway with our field test, one thing I want you to note is that I shoot in RAW. And during the day, I'm going to go with aperture priority. So, when we get to the night photos, I'm going to switch over to shutter priority and I'm going to hold at 1 60th of a second. I may go 1 80th as well. Um, but with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right in.
After putting the camera through its paces and braving the coldness outside, I'm now inside, I'm warmed up, and I'm ready to give you my list of pros, cons, and my overall thoughts. As I've done with other reviews, I've taken notes along the way, and I've got them right in front of the camera so I can reference them, just so I don't miss anything along the way. With that said, let's go ahead and jump right in with my list of pros. I'm going to start off by talking about color rendering. It's something that Canon's always done well, and there's no exception to this camera right here. The reds are reds, greens are greens, and blues are blues. And they seem to reflect the colors of nature. They did a great job, no problems here. Next up, autofocusing. So as I mentioned before, it has 19 autofocus points, all of which are cross type. When I did the night photography, I was able to track cars coming in and out of the frame. And regardless of speed, I had no trouble in tracking those subjects. So it's nice. I also like the fact that this camera has a microphone input on it. Now, the built-in mic is decent, but if you ever want a better audio quality, you have the ability to capture it in the camera with that microphone port. So that's a good feature. I also like the fact that this screen, and this is one of my favorite features, is that it articulates out and it's touch sensitive right here. Now the touch screen is very natural and it's very responsive. If you have a smartphone or anything like that, it's very similar. You can pinch to zoom, you can swipe, and it works really well. The other thing Canon did very nice here is the lenses. So this lens kit is an STM lens, and it's the quiet autofocusing system. It works great. You don't hear it. And it, hats off to Canon because I really like the lens and the way that works. All right, so with that said, I'm ready to move in my list, to my list of cons. And to begin with, I want to talk about 1080p. 1080p is capped out at 30 frames a second. And um, in this day and age, a lot of people like to get up to 60. You can get to 60 with this camera, but you got to go 720p to get there. The other thing is battery life. This camera is rated at 440 shots. The direct competitor to this camera is the Nikon D5500, and that's rated at 820 shots. So I'd like to see a little better battery life out of this. The maximum setting for auto ISO is capped at 6400. Not sure why that is, because the maximum native ISO for this camera is 12,800. It can extend up to 25,600, but I would like to be able to get into the menu system and set that to at least 12,800. When I did the night shots, I manually got out of auto ISO and went to 12,800 just so I can test and see what that looked like. But again, for me, it's in my list of cons because it is capped and maybe a firmware upgrade can correct that. Not 100% sure. One other thing I want to talk about is um, the high ISO speed noise reduction system. So what this is, is you can go into the camera, you go into the menu system, and you can set it off, low, standard, or high. And if you're shooting raw, it's not applicable. But I did test this out. I shot raw. But I also went in and shot a few JPEGs just because I wanted to see how this worked. Now, the naming of that system, high ISO, would tell me that this noise reduction applies at high ISOs. But I found the noise reduction system to be enabled even at the lowest of ISOs, 100. So I thought that was a little odd. It's in my list of cons because if you're shooting an ISO of 100, you really don't want any noise reduction. It means that you're trying to capture everything this camera can, can, can let you get. So for me, it's a gig. Um, this also has the AA filter, also known as a low-pass filter included. Nikon's done a good job at removing those uh, from their cameras, but in this one right here for Canon, it's got it in there. What does it mean? It means uh, slightly softer images. It's good to have that uh, low-pass filter removed. Now, last but not least is the cost. I think the cost on this is a little high. It's just my opinion. Uh, this body and the lens kit, shop around, see where it's at. And I think you'll tend to find that this camera is a little more pricey. So with that said, let me just go ahead and jump right in with my overall thoughts. If you're upgrading from the Canon T5i, this is a solid upgrade. It's a good camera. It feels good in the hands. Uh, I think the shots were, were, were good. I think uh, they were decent quality. 
Um, I think the low light performance at high ISOs was average, uh, but overall it's a good camera, good solid camera. Now, if you are looking for your first DSLR and you're not invested in the Canon line, I would suggest you take a look at the Nikon D5500 um, and also try to evaluate for yourself whether or not you're looking uh, to do more photos or video with this camera. If you're doing video, this is great. I really like the STM lens on this. Now keep in mind, Nikon does have an AF-P lens. So if you're looking at the D5500, look for that lens, AF-P, because the lenses they include with the 5500 kit I don't believe they they have they they are of the AFP type. So just keep that in mind and look for that. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called The Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but I also post them about things that happen in the real world, such as automobile maintenance and homeownership. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.